Welcome to my channel. This is the Diamond Chrysalis, aka Divested Diamonds. This is Divestment with Purpose, and you have arrived. Greetings and salutations, ladies. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for being here today. Please do me a favor and click the like button as you watch this video. Thank you. Thank you kindly. In today's premiere, we're going to talk about the wall. We're going to be discussing women hitting the so-called wall at 35. We're also going to talk about why it's important for women to stop wasting their time participating in male rhetoric that's focused on destroying women. But first, let's talk about the wall. What exactly does it mean when men say to women, you've hit the wall? Well, since we know that this is a made up term concocted by misogynistic males in order to attempt to put women in their quote unquote place, I had to search high and low for this definition until I found it in the Urban Dictionary. Shocker, the meaning of the term quote unquote hit the wall as it pertains to women is as follows. The period in life when one's attractiveness starts to decline. To hit the wall means to start losing beauty and youth. Let's take a look at this a little bit further. The wall, the point at which a woman's looks rapidly start to fade. Most women hit the wall in their early to mid thirties. A woman who has hit the wall is said to be a post wall woman. After a woman hits the wall, she will most likely become bitter as she no longer garners male attention. See this right here was definitely written by a male. And how would I know this? Well, it's dripping with pure misogyny. But okay, let's take that for what it is. Let's take that definition as it is. Let me also add a little extra to this. When males talk about, quote unquote, hitting the wall, it's not just beauty and youth they're referring to. It's the ability or inability for a woman to produce offspring. The question here is, should women really worry about the proverbial wall? Well, absolutely not. But because we can't control how people feel, it all depends on which stage you are in life. All women don't aspire to be married. Some women do. Not all women want to have children. Some women do. I don't really think that women should focus on male insults. I don't think that women should live their lives according to what men want. And I certainly don't feel that women should be bowing down to the shaming tactics of men. I know it's fashionable for these males and the pick me community to remind women that their eggs are running low and that they need to settle down now or else they'll end up alone with a bunch of cats. First of all, what's wrong with that? What is wrong with a woman choosing to be alone with a bunch of cats? Here's the thing that we all need to bear in mind. Life taking its course should not be a source of shame for any woman. Women are not a monolith. We know this. All women do not want the same things in life. I think we're educated enough to know our own bodies that we don't have to rely on male podcasters and their pick me's to remind us when the quote unquote clock is ticking. Here's the thing. Life happens and we all make decisions that are suitable for whatever situation we're in at that time. 
I've never believed in groupthink or that we as humans, but especially women, should live life for others instead of ourselves. Everybody at some point in time will quote unquote hit the wall. And that includes men. Like seriously, what's the worst that could happen after you've quote unquote hit the wall? It's not quite as gloom and doom as a lot of these people might think it is. Because let's face it, the only reason it's even a thing is because there are some desperate men out there missing out on a chance to utilize women as a resource. And a lot of these men carry a lot of resentment. What a lot of men are good at, unfortunately, are manipulative tactics to try and humble women where they fall short. Misery loves company. Let's take a listen to the following. Men are right when they said women hit the wall at 35. You see, the darkest part of the morning happened before sunrise. Because when you're trying to manifest something or when you're about to have a breakthrough, you hit the wall. A lot of people give up a lot of people fumble and because they give up they don't get to see what's over there on the other side so when a woman is 30 so when a woman is 35 she hits the wall because that's the point in her life where she's about to go into a new cycle into the wisdom cycle where she's going to really connect with who she is where she's not going to put up with any more nonsense. She's going to drop people out of her life that no longer deserve to be in her life. She's going to connect to the inner wisdom within her. It's like her intuition is going to be activated. She is going to say and do whatever is on her mind. And she is going to start living for her and not everybody else around her. So, but... If women allow man to put shame and disgrace and guilt in their body by telling them that they're hitting the wall and no, no man will ever want them, then that is going to interfere with how you go over that wall to have your breakthrough, to have your wisdom, to have your intuition. Because shame and guilt is a weight and a burden and it does something to your body it does something to your intuition it does something to your wisdom so there is nothing wrong with hit in the wall because it means that on the other side is your breakthrough on the other side is your blessing on the other side is your wisdom on the other side is your abundance on the other side is your prosperity so if you reach the wall Open your heart to love. Let go of fear, guilt, and shame. All right? So when they say at 35, you're hitting the wall, say thank you because on the other side will be my breakthrough. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Very well stated. I do not disagree with anything she said. This was beautifully on point. I would advise women, especially younger women, to pursue their dreams before marriage. If marriage is what you want, go for it. Just make sure you have some sort of financial strategy to fall back on should things not work out. Obviously, no one goes into a marriage thinking about divorce or the end of life. But things do happen and you have to be prepared. It's for your own protection. If being child-free and single is what you want, do it. If setting up a foundation first, going to school, getting your degree, and having your own money is what's important to you, go for it. What you must not do as a woman is assimilate yourself to someone else's idea of how life is, quote unquote, supposed to be. Any reason that doesn't have a logical or genuine explanation for why you should be doing it is usually meant to benefit someone else. Society and men in general 
have for years gotten away with speaking to women in absolutes because they don't think we're smart enough to make our own decisions. This is why they're always shaming women into doing what they want. This entire conversation is about women being shamed for going through life's process. There's a lot of misogyny in society. There's a lot of it in religion. Most traditions and cultures are full of it too. Even amongst children, misogyny exists. Ever heard of a little boy say to another boy, ha ha ha, you fight like a girl. And what's that usually met with? Laughter, ridicule, as if that's the worst thing that could ever happen to that little boy. But I digress. When you live your life trying to fulfill someone else's dreams, you're neglecting your own dreams and your own purpose in life. Eventually, you'd be miserable. We all need to understand that we are here for a purpose and it's up to you to find out what that purpose is. What we've allowed to happen as women through the brainwashing of the patriarchy is believe that our only purpose is to please a man and have children. While I don't have an issue with that, for those who choose that path, I have a problem with society, but especially men expecting us all to do the same. The real question is, are these lifestyles fulfilling for women? Or do we do this based on society's script? It's okay to question things. And it should be okay to go the opposite direction of what is expected of you without being called something unattractive. It's an absolute fact that when it really comes down to basics, women do better without the interference of men. But the same can't be said for men. Most men are dependent on women and can't live fruitful lives without women because they need us as a resource. They need us for our free labor. I do find it amusing, however, that the loudest men with no resources are the ones constantly calling women derogatory terms in order to keep us in line. You will never hear men who've got their lives together bitch and moan about women and how we need to settle for crumbs. Far too many men feel entitled to women even when they don't deserve them. Far too many men have the habit of disrespecting women based on age and ability to have children. These are poor men's talking points. These are layman's talking points. These are the talking points of men who were destined to be losers. Kevin Samuels was a loser and so were all his male and female followers. It's usually low grade, low vibrational males with not much to offer who have a lot to say about women perishing alone with a bunch of cats. There are five types of men who tend to do this. Those with unresolved mommy and daddy issues, those with low education who seem to possess mountains of financial issues, and those who dislike women based on misogyny or the fact that they think being a woman is easy. Therefore, we as women should just take whatever life throws at us. FYI, we already do. The other type is the lazy hustler with a sob story. This is the type who plays the victim card extremely well. Matter of fact, he is so good at it that by the time he's done finessing you, your whole life will be a blur should you get out of your transit state? He's also the type who blames his failures on everyone else. The final type is the one who possesses all these aforementioned characteristics, but also believes that being male is somehow more superior to being female. These are the types who will gloat at seeing a woman in distress while saying things like, well, you're a strong and independent woman, right? Isn't that what you fought for? Take this L, feminist, 
Get yourself out of your own bind. You don't need men, right? All the while, being willfully ignorant and dismissive to the fact that when women fought for equal rights, it was never about competing directly with men or wanting to be like men. I don't want to be a man. And I very much doubt that the majority of women out there wish they were men. It was all about fairness and being treated like fellow human beings. The fact that men were allowed to beat their wives back in the day and that was considered legal is absolutely diabolical. And not only was it legal and socially accepted, it was encouraged to keep quote unquote order in the home. Men and women will never and can never be equal outside of the basis of humanity because we are not the same. Men and women are different. You can compete with something that's incomparable to you. We should be equal based on humanity because both men and women are deserving of being treated with common decency and respect. That's what it boils down to. Weak, low IQ men do not understand the nuances of this argument. This is why they use cheap shots to lash out at women. They don't even understand women at all. Let's go back to the issue of quote unquote hitting the wall as far as our egg count is concerned. I can guarantee that most men who talk about the woman's reproductive system do not know much about it. Most of them truly think that pounding your cat is satisfactory and that the G-spot really does exist. It's laughable, really. But anyway, according to the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, ACOG, a female fetus will typically have between six and seven million eggs, technically called oocytes. Now, this is what you call eggs that haven't reached maturity, right? At 20 weeks of gestation. Let me repeat that. According to the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, ACOG, a female fetus will typically have between six and seven million eggs called oocytes at 20 weeks of gestation. So even as a fetus, you have between six and seven million eggs. This is before you're born. By the time of birth, that number will have dropped to about one to two million. This is typically what you're born with. The reason this number is not definitive for every female baby is because it varies from one female to the next. Many of these eggs will be released throughout your lifetime, but not all of them. By the time a girl hits puberty, the number of eggs has usually reduced between 300,000 to 500,000, which is still more than will ever be released. When you reach your 20s, you will typically have around 150,000 to 300,000 left in your ovarian reserve. In your early 30s, you will often have 100,000 to 150,000 eggs in your reserve. That number continues to drop in your late 30s, with the ACOG suggesting that most women will have around 25,000 at the age of 37. As the number of eggs continues to decline, so does your fertility. Most of us already know this. These are our bodies after all. We're the ones who are born female. We're the ones who carry XX chromosomes. Let's continue. The quality of the eggs will continue to decline over time due to the age of the eggs. Remember, this process is one that begins in your fetal stage and continues throughout your childbearing age all the way to menopause. But here's the thing, as long as you're ovulating, you can still get pregnant. By the time you get to 51 years old, 
which is the average age for menopause in the United States, the ACLG reports that women will have around a thousand eggs left. And by average, they simply mean a number expressing the central or typical value in a set of data. This doesn't mean that all women will reach menopause at 51. Some might get there early, and for others, it may be a little later. Every woman is different. So making fun of women for an issue that they have no control over is childish. Like, grow the fuck up. You all need to worry about having your prostates checked instead of always worrying about our gynecological issues. But I guess you have to worry since you know that we create you all. Your selfish interests lie in the continuation of you all's DNA, right? Anyway, back to the wall. Both men and women hit the wall. But since women are 11 years ahead of men in mental maturity. We also prepare ourselves a lot better than men do. Like the lady in the video said, post 35, most women come into the kind of enlightenment that the majority of men can only dream of. Not only do they get mad at women for having this level of wokeness, right? They are mad that you get to experience it long before they do. Now, I'm not going to say that they don't understand what happens to women after 35, because they do. The reason a lot of them disrespect women and hit below the belt and say ageist things is because they realize for the most part that they can't manipulate you the same way they do girls in their teens and young women in their early 20s. The reason most men keep harping on about younger women while disrespecting older women is to basically shame you and devalue you for getting older. Now make that make sense. Just think about that. The mental gymnastics. A lot of these males think that they get better with time that they get better with age. But we've all seen what happens to them as they get older. Hospice care wives are not a trend. That is real life. Let's take a listen to the following. Hey, TikTok friends, it's your girl, Nia. Listen, I have a very specific message for a very specific audience. So if this does not apply to you, then please baby, let it fly. This message is for the older fellas, and maybe it's a warning for some of y'all who ain't so old yet. Listen, some of y'all wait until you in your 60s, and you got high blood pressure, you got heart disease, you got arthritis, you got a bad back, your little wee-wee don't work like it used to, you done gained all this weight, you can't see good, you can't move good, and that's when y'all are ready to settle down. Baby, listen, we are not interested in being hospice wives, okay? There are a lot of good women out here who are single and who have been ready and able to love a good man. But many of y'all play with our hearts. Y'all got to have all the other women and run around and play games and can't commit and all of that until your health gets to declining. Once your health is bad, then it's like, oh, I need me a good woman. I'm ready to settle down. Baby, listen, miss me with all of that. I'm just noticing a trend. That's all I'm going to say. I'm noticing a trend. Again, if it doesn't apply to you, let it fly. No reason for you to get triggered in my comments if it has nothing to do with you. But I will say this. If you think that you can run around in your good years and play with the heart of good people and waste the time of good people, and then when you're all alone and broken down and by yourself, decide, I'm going to get it together and I'm going to do right by her. And she's going to be okay with driving me to my appointments and picking up my scriptions. Baby, you might just be in for a rude awakening. I did see recently on this lovely app how there was a, they were talking about how there's so many 
single black men living in nursing homes by themselves. Nobody's coming to visit them and they don't have family. And I'm not saying that's the only demographic that this happens to, but I think it's sad and it's unfortunate that it happens to anyone at all. So all I'm gonna say is this, while you run around having a good old time in your youth, messing with people in your youth, think about how that's gonna play out and what your karma's gonna look like in your senior years. That's all I got. Love you, bye. So I stumbled across this post on TikTok and it says, okay, I really need a good woman in my life. I don't need lectures, but reality, I just turned 70, so I'm ready. Is that right? So I thought, you know, why not say to men what they usually say to women as they're growing older and they haven't found a partner? Have you considered getting a pet? Do you have a cat? Do you have a dog? Um, are you prepared to alone? You want the sympathy and the empathy and you want women to fall at your feet because you're, you're finally ready at 70 years old. <laughs> Y'all have no sympathy for women when women are in their 40s or in their 30s and they're saying they don't have anybody. Then you're like, that's what you get. Get your pet now. This man waited almost his entire life. I'm sure you must have stepped over quite a few good women. Isn't that what y'all tell women when they're single? I'm looking for the sympathy, but I'm fresh out. I'm not sure if he's looking for love, but he might be looking for a caretaker. You're 70 years old. Your body's probably starting to break down, starting to deteriorate. You need somebody to take care of you. Somebody to make sure you take your meds. Somebody to take you back and forth to doctor's appointments. Now you're finally ready to give a woman a chance that you probably could have gave a chance 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. You probably could have been had somebody. I don't think it's that he doesn't want to run the streets anymore. I think he's just too tired to. Let me tell you something. The reason why I be telling y'all not to um, trip about these men and whatnot is because I I work in the healthcare field. I've been in the healthcare field since I was 18 years old. They're dying alone. They're dying alone. The women that's in these places, their their daughters are coming and bringing them to the nail shops, getting their hair done, coming to see them every. Sorry, their daughters are coming to see them every two weeks you better ask somebody i'm in the, i am the one who is right there when some of these men are taking their last breath i have cleaned so many dead bodies and guess what none of nobody showed up for them not their kids not their wives not not their grandkids nobody came for them because why they were not they were not good men while they were alive they're gonna continue dying alone that's why i tell y'all don't trip <laughs> i'm physically seeing it on a daily basis watching them all go by themselves and this is their grandpas that they're talking about these are the men that they're talking about this is their grandpas that's dying alone and it's going to be them that's just the reality of shit that's why i don't be worried about these men talking because baby i watch y'all every day go by yourselves with nobody on you side and to those of you who think a woman is nothing unless she's attached to a man or that her, quote unquote, hitting the wall or being, quote unquote, post wall means the end of her life or any chance of ever finding happiness. Please listen to the following. Women over 50 are deciding to live alone. And I got a couple of neighbors that are living alone over 50 and I asked them I said, what do you find so liberating about living alone? And the enthusiasm in their voice, the enthusiasm in their face. They said, Drayton, for the first time in my life, I can do exactly what I want when I want to do it. It's the ultimate freedom that I didn't have for nearly 30 years. You see, both women were married. Both women had children. And they said that um, they just often felt like they were working for everyone else and doing very little for themselves. And if you think it's a lonely life, you would be incorrect because a lot of these women that I've spoken to, they get involve themselves in clubs. They have other girlfriends that are single and they have ladies nights out and they go bowling and they go to the movies together. It, it doesn't seem like a very lonely lifestyle at all. Actually, it seems like something that has 
been really good for their mental health. And I want I want to know what you think. Is this are you single by choice or are you single looking for that guy? You know, if you're over 50, let me know. Single by choice or looking for that guy. Um I just found it really interesting that so many women that I've spoken to are just excited about being free for the first time. Let me know your thoughts. Like and follow for more. The truth of the matter is, if most men truly believed that there were more superior than women, they wouldn't go out of their way to enslave the minds of women. They wouldn't try to denigrate women by constantly chipping away at our self-esteem or try to estimate our value as human beings. Women would have never had to fight to be treated as adult human beings if men were so confident in themselves and their abilities. Men had to step in to hinder our growth and create situations where they got to benefit more out of us than we ever could from ourselves. Imagine someone who isn't you telling you what your purpose is in life and then getting mad at you for challenging his opinion. The fact is, who we are is a threat to most men. Their lack of emotional intelligence won't allow them to see things from a woman's perspective. They're not where we are mentally. Most men are driven by rage ego, and testosterone. These are the only things they have that keep women underfoot. Human beings seem to punch down when they have no leverage. Throwing cheap shots is a loser's game and a loser mindset. When intellectually challenged, most people will go low and then strike to inflict pain. If they can't win using logic, they will cripple you from playing the game at all. The sad thing is, they'll still consider themselves victorious, even though you had no fair play. At the end of the day, we as women need to realize this entire game of life, this entire game between the sexes has nothing to do with fairness. It's predatory. The majority of men have treated women in this manner throughout our existence. Now, there are those of you who get it, but there aren't enough of you to make a difference. I do, however, appreciate those of you who are brave enough to voice your opinions and say it like you mean it. The following clip shows a grown man's response to someone who posted this. Why would a 40-year-old man in the peak of his career Saddle for old single moms when he could wife a 21-year-old with low mileage. Please pay attention to the fact that most men refer to women as objects or processes that are not of the human experience. Let's take a listen. You know, I'm not going to make friends with a lot of guys who are 45, 50 years old right now with this TikTok who are dating women in their 20s, okay? Because I think I figured out why we do it. At age 45, guy my age dating a woman who's 25, it might be because I'm stuck as a man at the emotional maturity level of that 25-year-old woman. There's nothing wrong with her being emotionally 25 if she is 25. There's a real problem with me being emotionally 25 if I'm 45, walking around with my silver in my beard and in my hair, with my nice car, with my established job, I look like a safe place for that 25-year-old woman. She wants a guy who's going to treat her maturely and fairly. And so she gets into the relationship with the guy who's 45, thinking he's going to treat her differently than that guy who's 23-year-old. Well, nope. It's a bait and switch, and it hurts worse than being hurt by a 23-year-old. Because you're 43, 44, 45, and you still haven't healed that wound as a man that you got when you were 23, when you came out of your first relationship. Here's to stopping using women who are in their 20s as emotional scratching posts, guys. Quit dating those women, get into therapy, actually become that emotionally secure, emotionally available man. 
And then if you still want to date somebody who's 25, you can do that and actually give emotionally what you're advertising with the silver in your beard. Or just date somebody your own age. The fact that he had to give a disclaimer about potentially hurting a lot of men's feelings for saying what he said was very telling. But wait, there's more. If you're a man over the age of 35 and you strictly, and I say strictly date girls under 25 only because you like them young, you're fucking weird. Like you're a clown. That shit is desperation. I'll call you out on it because nobody else will. If you have something in common with a 21-year-old and bro, you're pushing 40, you haven't mentally developed past the age of, let's say, 25. That's a man-child. You couldn't hold a conversation with a grown-ass woman. In fact, you wouldn't be able to eloquently express yourself with her and she would probably call you out on all your bullshit. You got to have game, not just money, with a grown-ass independent woman. Gifts, dinner, and Viagra ain't going to cut it, but you don't like that, do you? Speaking of gifts, let's talk about the younger girls. Now, younger girls in their early 20s, I'm not knocking them for it. They're still figuring their shit out, so they got to hustle. They got bills. They got debt, probably out of college. You're the motherfucking ATM machine. Never forget that. Nothing more, nothing less. And when she realizes that you need Viagra to perform weekly, she's going to go and sleep with a younger dude and still use you for the money. You fucking idiot. Speaking of sex now, well, you must be mediocre at best because you don't want to put your ego down and sleep with a woman who knows what she's doing, but you'd rather do it with a younger girl. Because remember, according to you guys, the older women, the women over 25 have been ran through. They come with a lot of baggage. <laughs> if I told you guys what a young girl will do for a pair of shoes and a purse, it would break your little heart. Now that I think about it, that's probably the exact reason why you fuck with them in the first place. This conversation about women hitting the wall was started by men to do what they've always done, which is degrade and devalue women. I would like for younger women in their early 20s, all the way through the early 30s, to pay attention to these conversations because in years to come, you're the ones they're going to be referring to in this manner. When older women try to warn you about the ways of some of these men, it's not always coming from a place of jealousy. Now, I've seen the videos where, for some reason, there are groups of younger women who truly believe older women are jealous of them and their beauty. Look, I don't doubt that some of these women have experienced something to make them feel this way. But here's the thing, no woman should ever be jealous of your age, your looks, or your youth, because we've been where you are. You're not special in that sense. Reason being, humanity is evolutionary. Now, depending on where you're from or who you're surrounded by, that may be your reality. But not every woman means you harm or wants to, quote unquote, Take your man. A lot of these men who target teenage girls and those of you in your early to mid 20s are usually interested in you because you're too young to know better. Notice how they're always talking about youth? What is youth? Merriam Webster says, the time of life when one is young. Cambridge Dictionary says, the period of your life when you are young. Oxford Dictionary says, the time of life when the person is young. And it goes on to elaborate that especially the time before a child becomes an adult, we need a moment of silence. Okay, here's a fact. Your prefrontal cortex, the part of your brain responsible for decision-making, reasoning, personality expression, maintaining social appropriateness and other complex cognitive behaviors isn't fully developed until the age of 25. You have to think about this. What are these men really looking for? What would a much older man have in common with someone in this position, if not for manipulative purposes? There's a reason a lot of cultures pounce on young girls Right at puberty, these girls aren't fully developed, both physically and mentally. Therefore, it's easy to brainwash them by pumping them, no pun intended, 
full of ideas to satisfy grown men's degeneracy and sexual deviancy. A lot of them will cite culture as a reason for doing what they do. But when is being a P3DO part of anyone's culture? I'm waiting. Oh, shoot. Darn it. It's part of male culture. Now, hear me out before you jump down my throat. Go to your family members and ask about your great-grandparents or your great-great-grandparents and find out when it was that they got married. I want you to ask how old those women were when they got married. I think a lot of you will find out that those women who really weren't women were actually girls when they got married. And what exactly do a lot of these males love to say? Oh, back in the day, our great great grandparents got married and stayed married forever. Anytime you have a child that's in a relationship with a grown ass man, the power dynamics are never the same. So before you shame today's women and start giving props to old relationships, I want you to take a moment and think about it. And I mean, really, really think about it. Also, just because the law says you can do something, it doesn't mean you're mature enough to understand the consequences of whatever it is you're being permitted to do. Laws are created by man, and man sees the benefit of preying on the vulnerability and naivete of the uninformed. This is just another excuse for males to defile underdeveloped girls by destroying their souls and indoctrinating them into a cultish mindset. It's another way for males to control a girl or a woman's bodily autonomy by playing God with her mind. From selfish deviant needs to culture and religion, these men have found every excuse to trap young women and girls just so they have nowhere else to go until they say so. The nature of most men is predatory and hypocritical at best. It's okay for them to sleep around, get used up, even acquire a few STDs. You're supposed to be okay with that because they've convinced themselves and you that this is the nature of men. As such, it must be accepted without question. Do you know what else is male nature? Taking liberties. They want you pure and inexperienced both mentally and sexually because that way you can compare your dissatisfaction to anything else because that's all you've ever known. A woman over 30 or 35 will not put up with that. Women over 30 or 35 will not be toyed with. Well, most of us won't. There are a few who will. But anyway, there are plenty of us who will not be toyed with in this manner because there will be some pushback. That pushback is the reason that they keep calling women masculine. At this point, we've heard it all. According to them, they want a woman that's soft, feminine, friendly, cooperative, submissive, etc. Right? Let me translate what that really means. They want you quiet, subservient, with no opinions of your own. That's what that means. A lot of these shallow men will suck the life out of you. They want you to waste your youth. They want you to waste your beauty. And once you've aged out, they will trade you in for someone younger. And the cycle begins all over again. So you see the transformation that occurs at the age of 35, when you've quote unquote hit the wall, must never be seen as something negative because being enlightened is more of a blessing than it is a curse. If the majority of men choose not to have anything to do with quote-unquote post-wall women, look at it this way. 
Their rejection is your protection. Why would any sane woman want to be with anyone so shallow anyway? Let's take a listen to the following. I was once told that women lose their value after 30. It literally drops in half. I was 29 and I had six months before I turned 30. It was during a podcast with the late Kevin Samuels and I argued with him. I got pissed off with him. I couldn't help but think about what my boyfriend at the time was thinking because he was a huge Kevin Samuels fan. Anyway, today happens to be my 31st birthday. That boyfriend and I broke up. I got over a year of therapy, started doing music, started doing my own nails, taught myself how to sew so I can better my swimsuit company, started my passion projects of giving back. Honestly, I don't know what value he was referring to. I'm pretty sure it was something about being in the dating marketplace or some bullshit. Let me tell y'all something. I don't give a fuck what y'all think about my value because I place value on myself. And for my fellow women out there who are younger than 30, older than 30, or being told that we exist solely to reproduce, your value is what you make it. I don't care how old I am. I care about how old I feel, how old I look, and how wise I'm becoming. Because baby, with age, <laughs> I don't hesitate to set boundaries. I know my worth. The enemy wants you to think otherwise so you can rush into situations that are not for you. And all I can say to that is good riddance to bad rubbish. On that note, what are your thoughts on what's been discussed here today? Please leave your thoughts and comments down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And remember, ladies, no one, and I mean, no one has the right to determine your worth, but you. Sure, people will have their opinions, but that's where it ends. Your value comes from within and how you view yourself. Thank you so much for watching. This is the Diamond Chrysalis. You've been watching Divestment with Purpose. Divest from Blackistan. Divest from Dusty Males. Divest like a butterfly. And I'll see you next time. Bye, Diamond.